Hi, this is Jonathan with Echo Church. Thank you for joining us. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 5 through 7 is known as the uh, Mount, uh, Sermon on the Mount. And this is the teaching of Jesus on the nature or the culture of the kingdom of heaven. This is what the kingdom of heaven is like, those who uh, live in it, and that is those who are under the authority and the rule of Jesus, uh, those who uh, profess to be uh, Christian, uh, those who make Jesus the Lord and Savior and King. And chapter 8 and 9 of Matthew, uh, Jesus demonstrates the power of the kingdom of heaven. And today we're uh, going to take a look at chapter 8. Now, chapter 8 has a series of uh, a healing by Jesus. And uh, so one of the things that we need to realize is that uh, healing, whether it's a, a physical healing, emotional healing, uh, or a spiritual healing, healing restores a person. And that uh, restoration of an individual as a whole person is part of uh, God's salvation. It's not only that um, salvation through Jesus Christ is uh, forgiveness of our sins against God, but as a result, all things are being restored. Uh, of course, at the heart of it is our relationship with God is being restored. And when uh, we have the right relationship with God, then we as an individual, we become whole. And that uh, is, in one sense, it is a healing. And uh, so here, Jesus demonstrates physical healing um, and uh, characterizing and symbolizing, emphasizing that the a healing or the restoration of a person is part of God's salvation. And so here, there um, there's a leper uh, who is cleansed. So that's restoration of a person. And then, of course, a uh, centurion asks uh, for the healing of his servant at home. And, and then uh, verse 14, uh, Jesus enters Peter's house and he sees uh, Peter's mother-in-law and he heals her. And then later on, it says that uh, that evening, many people uh, brought uh, uh, their friends and family members uh, to Jesus, and and they were healed not only of a, a physical uh, ailment, but also a release and a freedom from demonic and spiritual oppressions. And uh, uh, so in all of these uh, stories of healing, uh, we need to realize that the uh, power of God, especially when we're proclaiming the gospel, when we're talking about God's salvation through Jesus Christ, that um, healing is part of the uh, equation. And that is why I believe that when we pray for people, especially pray for healing, I believe that you will see more uh, God's miraculous healing, whether it's a, a physical or emotional uh, a healing, when you are praying for uh, non-Christians, because that way uh, non-Christians can see the goodness and the power and the reality of God in their life in a very, very tangible way. So first of all, I want to encourage you to pray for your know, non-Christian friends and family members. And in fact, not only in secret, but pray uh, for them in their presence. Um, and if they have any kind of a, a, a physical ailments or uh, problems, whether uh, large or small, just on that spot, uh, in Jesus' name, simply um, uh, pray for healing. And uh, God will answer those prayers probably more often than not that you will be surprised. Now, another thing about uh, this chapter and when Jesus heals uh, people, 
uh, the, their faith or their uh, approach, uh, their attitude toward posture toward Jesus is extremely important. And actually, they're very different. And so we can learn from how they approach them. First of all, when uh, Jesus cleansed a leper, uh, this person was ostracized from the community. And yet that person had a boldness to approach a rabbi. And um, that is one thing that we need to have when we approach Jesus is this sense of boldness, uh, breaking any kind of a social or cultural barriers or taboos. In other words, uh, we need to have this uh, insatiable hunger and the almost sense of desperation to come to Jesus. And, and when we do, then uh, we will see the power of God. And this is available to anybody, especially those who know Jesus, those who are believers. We can approach God with this sense of desperation, saying, God, we want to see, uh, see you, see your goodness, see your power. Um, or it could be, God, I want to see and experience more of your love. These are all legitimate uh, hunger and thirst that we have as followers of Jesus. And we can approach God with boldness, uh, willing to break any kind of a, a social protocol or cultural taboo and, and desperate to approach Jesus. This is absolutely critical when we want to see more of who God is and God's power. And then, of course, we have the story of uh, the centurion. And this is a famous story because uh, centurion, when uh, he approached Jesus, uh, asking for healing from him, uh, Jesus said, okay, I will come. And the centurion replied, no, you don't have to come. Just say the word. Why? Because the centurion says, I understand how authority works. I'm a, a man under authority. And so when someone in, in charge tells me what to do, I just uh, do them. And in the same way, I have someone uh, under me. And if I tell them, they just follow the order. And so in the same way, Jesus, you, I come under your authority. So you tell me and I know it will be done. This is uh, another attitude that we need to have when we approach Jesus, is to recognize Jesus as one in authority and uh, authority over us and over everything else for that matter. This is also critically important when we approach Jesus, especially when we uh, ask him for anything at all. I don't know uh, about you, but I often lack that. Uh, as I approach Jesus with my request, I forget that he is in charge. He's in charge over all creation, and he's definitely in charge over my life. And we need to recognize his authority over us and over uh, all of our situations and all of the world's situations, all of the world's nations and and all other authorities uh, of those nations, that Jesus reigns above them all. And so he is in charge. Uh, he is the one uh, who has all authority in heavens and on earth. When we approach Jesus with our request, we need to recognize that whatever he says will be done. And that is the right uh, attitude and approach that we can have. Lastly, uh, when Jesus entered Peter's house, at least according to this account, uh, Peter's mother-in-law was healed. Doesn't seem like uh, Peter asked for it. Uh, it doesn't say that the, uh, she even asked for it. Here's uh, the third thing about uh, our faith. Sometimes it's not our faith, actually. It is the grace and love and the mercy of God uh, in our life. Again, it doesn't say 
it does not state that um, Peter or uh, his mother asked for healing. Jesus simply uh, saw that she was sick and he healed her. And that's another thing that we need to recognize is that ultimately uh, God heals because he loves. God heals out of his goodness and out of his grace. And we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, anticipate or uh, we cannot uh, uh, demand, but we need to have the humility. And, and at the same time that if we ask him that we should expect, we should expect for him to respond to us. But at the same time, that uh, he will do what he will do because he is the Lord. He is in charge. We cannot dictate uh, when, how, or what. And so we need to have that humility. And yet God is generous. God is good as shown here that Peter didn't ask for it. His mother didn't ask for it. And yet Jesus healed her. And of course, uh, out of uh, gratitude, uh, she rose and and began to serve him. That is just uh, uh, out of uh, gratitude that I can see here that she uh, began to serve him without being even asked. And that's because she received much uh, without uh, uh, asking for it. So here, uh, the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven has power, power to restore power to make a person whole. That needs to be part of the equation of the gospel. And also, somewhat separately, as we approach Jesus, as we can see that we have to have the attitude of faith. And, and so that's, uh, that's part of the culture, and if you will, the atmosphere of the kingdom of heaven. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, Matthew chapter 8 and all these interactions and the power that was demonstrated by Jesus. We ask that these things be true in our life, in my life, today and this week. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us and see you next week.